personal development and is really one of the main reasons why reishi has become so widely recognized as one of the top anti-stress herbs that we have available to us in the world today. So when we think about it, reishi is actually tonifying the lungs, the heart, the liver, the kidneys, it's modulating the immune system, it's healing and repairing and rebuilding the nervous system, it's allowing us to handle stress so much more easily, it's having that kind of adaptogenic bi-directional effect on us, on our entire physiology and our metabolism, and it's really helping us to detoxify from very uh, toxic, harmful substances that we're coming into contact with all the time. Plus it's a three treasure tonic and it's really helping us to catalyze our own personal development. So, you know, when you look at all of these benefits that Reishi can offer to us, you can see why Reishi's also got another reputation. It's actually got another name that it's widely used by as the great protector. Because when it's doing all of this for us, when we've been consuming Reishi over the long term and we've actually developed a, a very intimate and close relationship to it and we've been working with it consistently over a long period of time, we begin to feel much more deeply nourished and protected. We, we can actually step into the world with a bit less fear and a bit more bravery and Reishi can really support us in that process. It's certainly helped me in that regard and it's actually very rare to come across people that have been developing this kind of intimacy with Reishi over the long term that don't actually have these kind of testimonials about it. You know, it's most people that have been using it for a while will will tell you something similar to this. So yeah, Reishi really is the great protector. It protects us on almost every level imaginable. Reishi grows in a number of different climates, but it does tend to prefer and proliferate more in the more warmer, humid climates. So if you actually have access to wild reishi growing where you live, then by all means go and harvest it, but you really must approach it conscientiously and with a mindset of sustainability because the ecosystem very much needs that medicine as well. So we shouldn't ever really take more than we need and we should learn over time to assess the ecosystem and really connect with it in a way that we can ascertain whether or not that ecosystem can afford for us to take any, and if so, how much. Other than that, consuming reishi products. Now, there's a lot of products on the market. Unfortunately, the vast majority of them are pretty crap. Uh, if you're buying in wild, harvested reishi products, then you know you, you really just want to check the integrity of that person that's selling it to you because, first of all, it might not be wild. And if it is wild, you want to make sure that they're taking it from as pristine an ecosystem as possible because medicinal mushrooms do tend to accumulate toxic substances in their fruit bodies. They're very good at cleaning up the polluted, contaminated environment in that way, but the fruit body is the part that we're using for medicine. So if a mushroom has been taken from a contaminated area, it's unlikely to be safe to consume. Um, if you're buying in the whole dried mushroom, then you know you just want to break it up into as small pieces as you can and decoct that in, in hot water for a few hours and that's going to extract all of the polysaccharides and it's going to make a very nourishing herbal tea. You can also extract it into a very strong alcohol like ethanol to get all those alcohol soluble triterpene compounds. Um, you could do both extractions and combine them to make a dual extract, which actually has the, the full spectrum of Reishi's beneficial medicinal constituents. Uh, but if you're buying in extracts and things like that, or any kind of Reishi product really, you want to make sure that you're not buying in just ground up mushroom powder because it hasn't been extracted and if you just consume that straight, that's, it's so rich in fiber, it's just going to pass right through the body, out the other side, and it's going to have really minimal to no benefit whatsoever. So if you're buying the actual just dried powder, you're going to need to actually extract that yourself. You're going to need to make a tea with it or a tincture with it or something like that. So if you're buying an extract, you want to make sure that it's, if it's a powdered extract, you want to make sure it's a concentrated powdered extract. So normally these extracts come with a ratio, like a 10 to 1 ratio, which basically means they've taken 10 pounds or whatever weight measurement They've taken 10 pounds, let's say, of the whole dried mushroom and they've condensed that down into one pound of extract. So the extract is essentially 10 times more potent 
And you want to get a dual extract, so it's actually got the water-soluble and alcohol-soluble constituents combined. Um, if you're buying a liquid extract, it's the same, like a tincture. You want to get a dual extract, and you want that, uh, that ratio to actually be smaller this time. So the smaller the ratio, the more concentrated it is with liquid extract. So rather than a 10 to 1 ratio for the powder, which would be very strong, you know, you want to get that as low as possible for, for a tincture. So if it's like 3 to 1, 2 to 1, 1 to 1, the, the lower down the scale you get, the more concentrated it is, because that means that there's the same amount, in a 1 to 1 extract, let's say, there would be the same amount of liquid to the same amount of herbs, so it would be very, very concentrated. Aside from that, when we're dealing with cultivated reishi, we really want to be getting something called duanwood reishi. Uh, a lot of other cultivated reishi is just grown on grain. It's grown in a way that really doesn't provide the mushroom with all of its nutritional requirements, and so the end result is something that isn't nutritionally balanced. It's not medicinally active in anywhere near the same way as it could or should be. So growing it on grain and growing it using chemicals, you know, definitely not ideal. Some grain uh, growing procedures for reishi can be very productive, they can be very potent if they're done in the right way, but generally speaking, it's much better to get something called duanwood reishi, because duanwood reishi is reishi that's grown, this is a cultivation technique that's been developed in China, uh, in the Changbai Mountain region, and in that area, they're growing duanwood reishi on logs, of trees native to that area that reishi would be growing on in the wild. And this procedure doesn't require anything other than like mountain spring water added to it. So there's no need for chemicals, there's no need for pesticides, there's no need for any of that. And the Chinese government have actually legislated against any chemicals at all being used in this growing process. So if you're buying duanwood reishi, you know that you're getting the best product that there is. And Duanwood Reishi has been consistently proven to be at least, if not more than twice as potent as any other cultivated, cultivated Reishi on the market, and it's actually more potent than a number of wild harvested varieties that have been found. So Duanwood Reishi is really, it's more affordable than a lot of the wild Reishi, and it's actually more sustainable because it's cultivated. It's very, very potent, it's very reliable, it's very consistent. You know, in my mind, it's definitely the best option if you want to be including reishi into your life on a very consistent, long-term basis. So, really, that's it for now. There's a lot more to talk about with reishi, but this video is already getting way too long, so uh, we'll meet up again in another video and we'll discuss other benefits specifically.